In this video, we're going to take a look at the new property referencing system inside of Motion Builder 6, a way that you can take properties from one object and essentially send them to another object to reference them so that you can have uh, properties from multiple objects all sitting on one single object in your scene. Very, very handy system. To demonstrate it, I've set up a, a fairly simple little file. We'll go ahead and open this up with no animation, where we have three lights all resting on a sphere. Now, if I were to move the sphere right now, you notice all three lights are constrained to the sphere with some really cool stuff going on. What I'd like to do is to create a single control object in my scene where I can control all of these lights simultaneously with no effort. Uh, with the new property referencing system, this is very, very easily done. So to do this, I'm going to start off by creating what is going to become my control object. We'll go over to Elements, and I'll drag in a null. And just to make it nice and easy to see, we'll scale it up a couple of times and move it up into the air. And now really all I need to do is start creating my property references. Well, to be a, maybe a little cleaner, we'll take our null and I'll rename this light controller. So that looks pretty good. Now to create property references, there's a couple of ways to do it. Uh, one is through a UI and the other is drag and drop base. I'll be demonstrating them both. So for starters, let's go into the properties window. And we have the Customize button over here on the right. And at the far right tab, we see Property References. Now, right now, we have two panes. We have Source Properties and Destination. Uh, on the left, and Source Properties is where you're going to take the object whose properties you basically want to borrow, so to speak, uh, the object you will be referencing. Then you're going to take the properties from that and place them upon the destination object. Since I'm not going to be really getting anything from the light controller, I'll just be sending to the light controller, I can minimize this and then right click and choose remove object to clean this out and we get dr drop objects here. So what do I want to control in this scene? Well, it'd be nice if I could control the color of each light, if I could control the cone angle of each light, and if I could control the weight of the constraint binding the lights. So we'll do this one light at a time. So I'll start off with the red light up here in the corner, and with it selected, I'll just go ahead and hold down the X key, which would be uh, Alt if I were using the Motion Builder uh, key set, but I'm using the Maya set, of course. So uh, we'll go down to red light, and here we have all of the properties available to this light. Now underneath light settings, I see type, color, intensity, and so forth. Underneath color, we see R, G, and B. You can drag any one of these over or send any one of these over to the destination pane, and you will get R, G, and B, so you don't have to pick and choose. So I'll just grab color R and send it over, and we get uh, red light dot color. Now, to double check this to see how my uh, reference went, we'll go ahead and close this window. I'll jump back to my light controller object, and look at this. Down at the very bottom, if I close everything else up, we have property references red light color. Well, let's test it. We'll click on the little color pane and if we choose green, this guy turns green. If we choose sort of a cyan color, he turns cyan. So everything's working out just fine. So let's go ahead and create another property reference. We'll go back to customize and the property references window is still open. We still don't need light controller so I'll remove that object. We will drag and drop the light back in here. Now we don't have to hit the little uh, send button like we have here in the middle, which is what I did last time. I simply selected uh, the light's color and clicked the button here in the middle. We don't have to do that. If we like, we can just drag and drop from one side of the window over to the other, and uh, the properties appear just on the other side. And if I scoop my window out of the way and we go back, we can see that cone angle did indeed appear, and as I adjust, everything's live and jamming. Now if you uh, mess something up while you're working you think, you know, I really didn't want that particular property, it's very easy to select that property and delete it. But since I did want that over there, I'll go ahead and drag it back. Now uh, one more thing we did want was uh, the uh, constraint here. So if I open up constraints, we have the red constraint. So what I'll do is I'll just drag and drop this right out of the navigator and into our source properties. And if you check it out, our source properties list now expands to also include red constraint. You can have as many objects in here as if, you know, whatever you want, but it will become difficult to navigate if you have too many. Since I don't need the red light anymore, I'll just right click and remove it. So now all I see is the red constraint. We uh, immediately see weight. I can uh, either drag, drop, or click the send button, and we have red weight constraint. So let's check this out just real quick. We have, of course, color, which I've tested, red light uh, cone angle, which I've tested. 
We have the weight of our constraints. So if I drag this all the way down and I move our sphere, red light is now staying behind. He's no longer stuck to our mighty ball of doom. So, hey, rock on. Now, moving along. Uh, there are other ways to create these property references that do not even require this window. If you get to the point where you want to become the you know, motion builder power user, you don't want to use uh, unnecessary UIs, then there are much faster ways to do this, and I really, really dig this. We can select, say, our green light, who's going to be our second uh, pick of the evening. Under his properties, we have all of his light settings. We have color. We can just grab, uh, say, we'll just say color R in this case, and we can drag it over to light controller. Let go. It says create property reference. Click the button. Double check. Make sure that went through. There's green light color. So we could click and test that, but I'm, I'm sure it works. So uh, now we need to adjust uh, the cone angle as well. So we'll jump back over here. We see the cone angle. Again, just drag right over to light controller. Property reference. Now we need to do the green constraint and follow suit. We'll just drag, create property reference. Last one, we'll go over to our blue light. Notice I'm not even testing now. I'm totally confident that all this is working. <laughs> we'll go back to color R, light color, create property, cone angle, Great property reference, this is just too easy. And finally, we'll go over to the blue constraint, and we'll grab weight and drag it over. And we'll check things out over here. And we have red light color, red light cone angle, and uh, constraint weight, green color angle and weight, and blue color angle and weight. And they are all functioning just like they should. So, uh, we, well, I pulled down the constraint weight. That's not going to do too much for everybody. So we can adjust our magnificent cone angles, pull down all of our weights, and if we move our sphere, all the lights stay behind. If we then go back, so we want to maybe animate a blending in between our constraints and what's going on, we have this power. We have a full stage light rig system taking place with our cute little prof property references and our light controller. Very, very easy to use, super powerful, very excited about uh, getting to use this on future projects in Motion Builder. So that's going to pretty much wrap up this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks a lot.